we're in Barcelona at the Nice van der Rohe Pavilion. It was built in 1929 as part of the International Exhibition. Now, Mies van der Rohe was an architect who made famous the phrase, less is more. And this idea is used in art and architecture and design to reduce and instill uh, buildings and their components into simple forms. Less is more became the principle at the base of Mies van der Rohe's new style of architecture, looking not to glamour or formal complexity, but rather to the true essence of architectural construction to exalt its being. This phrase, less is more, perfectly underpins the content of the talk that's going to be given at the 8th International Workshop on Compositional Data Analysis. Joined by Eric Gransky and John Bakenshine, we aim to make a critique of the formal complexity that has entered into compositional data analysis in favor of the alternative simpler return to the true, true essence of its structure. The title of this talk is A Practical Evaluation of the Isometric Log Ratio Transformation. And the subtitle of the talk, Less is More, could be both architectural, structural and compositional. To start off with, what is an isometric log ratio, or ILR for short? For a typical data matrix of compositional data, an ILR is the logarithm of a ratio where the numerator and the denominator each consists of geometric means of a different subset of compositional parts. This family of transformations has been proposed for three main reasons. First, as a way to contrast groups of parts. Second, as generating a new set of coordinates with respect to an orthonormal basis. And third, as new variables that can be useful in explaining processes in compositional data. In this talk, we will look at, firstly, the properties of the ILR and what an ILR actually measures in practice, and the alternative use of log ratios of amalgamated, that is, summed parts. Our overall conclusion will be that the theoretical properties of ILRs are not a necessary requirement for good practice in revealing structures in compositional data, and the use of amalgamations in log ratios is preferred over geometric means. Often a set of ILRs is defined, one less than the number of parts, and called balances, defined by recursive partitioning that can be represented as a graph in the form of a binary tree. For example, in this simple four-part example, A would be contrasted against D, C, and B, then D against C and B, and finally C against B. The general formula shows the ratio of the geometric means the log transform and then a scalar constant which is imposed by the orthonormality of the basis. For example, the first ILR would have A in the numerator and the geometric mean of D, C and B in the denominator with a scalar constant of the square root of three quarters. Now here's a real example, a 10 part data set of oxides in rock samples from the R massif analyzed by Martin Fernandez and co-authors we publish this binary tree defining nine so-called principal balances. The first one contrasts calcium oxide, oxide against all the other parts, and then within the group of the other parts, the second one contrasts a subset of five parts against the other four parts. Writing out the log of geometric means as a linear combination of the logs, it is clear that principal balances have a principal component type definition with simpler coefficients. But notice that unlike principal components, balances are correlated. For example, the second balance consists of the average of the five log transform numerator parts minus the average of the four log transformed denominator parts. If this balance is used in further analysis, it would be necessary to know exactly what it is measuring. But the literature generally gives vague explanations, such as by the same authors, and I quote, ILR balances provide tools that improve interpretability and can also be used for an intuitive dimension reduction, by which they mean they could plot principal balance 1 versus principal balance 2. But what do these new variables on the axes actually mean? 
They also say that a balance opposes one set of parts with another set, and their interpretation is simpler than that of PCs. So they say it is simpler, but they give no explicit interpretation. The fact is that the interpretation of an ILR is very complicated. Listening to many talks at recent conferences on compositional data analysis and also questioning presenters of posters who use ILRs, we've come to the conclusion that most people interpret an ILR, and especially when it is called a balance, as a contrast between the total or average of the numerator parts and the respective total or average of the denominator parts. Now, this type of interpretation is precisely the one that Pavlovsky, Glan and co-authors give in their 2015 book in an example about voting percentages in an election. They show an ILR balance between four left-wing parties and two right-wing parties and say, and I quote, if someone is interested in knowing which wing has obtained more votes, more votes notice, and in evaluating their relative, relative difference, the balance between the left group versus the right group provides this quantitative information. The sign of the balance points out which group obtained more votes and the value gives the size of the difference in log relative scale. Now, Using this logic, in the recent Spanish elections, the right-wing parties would have won. Or, taking a hypothetical 15% for each of the four left-wing parties, and 20% for each of the two right-wing parties, it is clear that these authors' interpretation is not correct. They are interpreting the ILR as if it is the log ratio of two amalgamations which we would call an amalgamation log ratio, or summated log ratio, abbreviated as SLR, where there are sums in the numerator and denominator, not geometric means. The so-called ILR balance is in fact not a balance of the parts, as several authors insinuate, even drawing diagrams that are reminiscent of scales weighing parts. In fact, the term balance is a misnomer for the ILR but correctly used when parts are amalgamated. Clearly, if one sums the parts, then this balancing of parts on the left is correct. But when it comes to geometric means of parts, the situation can often turn out like that of the right, where lower totals actually weigh more than higher ones, like in the election example given previously. Bucianti and co-authors say, and I quote, that in an ILR, the ratio measures the relative weight of each group and the logarithm provides the appropriate scale. Pavlovsky, Glan and co-authors show a physical balance and say, I quote, when the mean balance is placed at the left side, it points out that the parts on the left have greater proportions than the parts at the right. It works like a lever in equilibrium, that is a balance in the plain sense. Well, about 10 days ago, I was at a traditional Turkish market and when I bought some tomatoes, I saw a real balance. Clearly, the log ratio of two amalgamations, or SLR, is easier to understand and interpret, and a more natural way to group subsets of compositional parts. And SLR is just like any simple pairwise log ratio, which is the fundamental concept in Acheson's approach. Furthermore, if algamations are to be formed, they should be defined by experts with domain knowledge and not be automatically created by some algorithm, for example, the one to find principal balances. For example, I work with biochemists who study fatty acid compositions, and the standard ratio is that of the sum of the percentages of poly polyunsaturated fatty acids relative to the sum of saturated fatty acids, that is the ratio PUFA by SFA. No biochemist would be persuaded to compute the ratio of geometric means instead. It would be impossible to interpret. In their book, Van den Bochart and Tolisano Delgado hit the nail on the head when they say, and I quote, the strongest difficulty with the ILR transform values or any orthonormal coordinates is that each coordinate might involve many parts, potentially all, which makes it virtually impossible to interpret them in general. Now here there's another possible confusion created by their using the term orthonormal coordinates, which appears in many publications. The coordinates are not orthonormal, 
They are coordinates with respect to an orthonormal basis. ILRs are vaunted as having the right mathematical properties for analyzing compositional data, and these properties are certainly very attractive. One of the main theoretical reasons for preferring ILRs is that they are coordinates with respect to an orthonormal basis. Martin Fernandez and co-authors say explicitly that CODA requires selecting an orthonormal basis with which to work on coordinates. Our rebuttal to this statement is that such coordinates are not a requirement for understanding structure and relationships in compositional data. Any transformation can be made as long as it respects basic CODA principles and makes sense to the research question. Mathematical issues should not dictate against the use of substan substantively justifiable transformations. For, a, for example, we have shown that a simple set of m-1 pairwise log ratios, that's one less than the number of parts, optionally including log ratios with knowledge-driven amalgamations, explains 100% or almost 100% of the log ratio variance. They generate all the pairwise log ratios and also have a back transformation to the original parts. An example will be given soon. Another property of ILRs often mentioned in the literature is that being a linearly independent set makes it easier to invert cross-product matrices in regression and covariances, covariance matrices in discriminant analysis, for example, which otherwise is a problem. But this is not a special property of ILRs. There is no problem using CLRs, centered log ratios, even though they are not full rank, because the generalized inverse can be used. Any set of additive log ratios can also be used. In fact, any set of linearly independent pairwise log ratios has the same property. Such a set forms an acyclic connected graph of the parts, as I've pointed out in my paper on variable selection. To illustrate the simple log ratio alternative and the visualiza visualization of log ratios as a graph, Consider first the graph of all pairwise log ratios for the 11-part archaeometric data set that I analyze in my book, Compositional Data Analysis in Practice. This shows 55 connections between the parts, that is, all the pairs. Next to it, the set of 10 additive log ratios, ALRs, where SI or silicon is the den denominator part, is a subgraph with 10 edges between the ratio pairs. The subgraph on the right similarly has 10 edges between all the parts and has no cycle in the network. This set of simple pairwise log ratios explains 100% of the log ratio variance. It generates sets of coordinates for the samples in nine-dimensional Euclidean space with a procrastis correlation of 0.97 with the configuration in the nine-dimensional space of all 55 log ratios. And as said before, this set of variables has an inverse back transformation to the original parts. It is non-singular and gives exactly the same regression results and Malinobis distances as would be obtained using ILR balances. Another property of ILR balances that its proponents use as a justification is that they are linear in the geometry of the simplex, whereas amalgamation balances are not. And again, as Pavlovsky, Glan, and co-authors say in their book, amalgamation is incompatible with the techniques presented in this book. And after the left-wing, right-wing voting example, they say that amalgamations are lacking consistency for comparison with other descriptors in the sample space and are not orthogonal projections. This dismissal of a relevant transformation because of a mathematical argument about the simplex sample space places an unreasonable restriction on the practitioner from using substantively valid transformations. In fact, John Aitchison himself warned against this, saying, and I quote, Giving the elegance of the algebraic geometric structure of the simplex, it is easy to fall into the pure mathematical trap that all compositional problems must depend on the structure, that all statistical problems should be addressed in terms of coordinates associated with orthonormal isometric bases. 
To close off, here is an alternative way to analyze compositional data using expert knowledge in the groupings of parts. The R massive data set has 10 parts, and a geologically meaningful way of grouping most of them into non overlapping groups is into so called mafic, felsic, and carbonate groups. A stepwise selection process of all possible log ratios, including those with the three amalgamations, is conducted to obtain a set of at most nine log ratios. It could also be less than nine if an acceptably high percentage of variance is achieved and the stepwise selection can be guided by expert geochemical knowledge. Here's the sequence of log ratios chosen and the set explains 100% of the log ratio variance. Actually, it is 99.99%. .99%. So its lack of optimality compared to ILRs is 0.01% only. And the Procrustes correlation is 0.993. Just four log ratios have explained more than 95% of the variance. On the right is the graph of the log ratios where the arrows point to the numerator part. The amalgamation MAFIC was not chosen. It is easy to reverse transform from the values of these nine log ratios back to the original parts. It is just the solution of a system of linear equations that is easy to set up. See Greenacre 2019. The Procrustes correlation of 0.993 means that the log ratio structure of the data is almost perfectly preserved using just these nine ratios. On the left is the log ratio analysis biplot, which, analyz which analyzes all 45 log ratios in this case. And on the right, the principal component analysis biplot using just the nine selected log ratios. The concordance of the two geometries of the sample points is clear. In conclusion, isometric log ratios are not simple. They are complicated ways of contrasting two subsets of parts, have an unclear interpretation, and so do not serve as useful new variables in CODA. Ratios of amalgamated parts are a more intuitive way, but amalgamation should only be used if they are relevant to the research question. No mathematical argument rules out their use as valid data transformations. The attractive theoretical properties of ILRs are not a necessary requirement for good code of practice in revealing structure in compositional data. Principal balances are very expensive to compute and difficult to interpret. Log ratio selection is cheap and easy to interpret. Use of log ratios, use of isometric log ratios, should be avoided. Rather, simple log ratios are favored, including those that involve amalgamations. The last word is by John Aitchison, and I quote, When countering this insistence on the use of ILR transformations, I said I would look forward to a convincing practical use of this method. As far as I know, there has been no progress in demonstrating its applicability. On behalf of my co-authors, we reiterate John's statement that we have seen no convincing demonstration of its applicability. Thank you very much. Well, I hope you enjoyed the talk. Now, watch out for our research papers. <laughs>